Hello, I'm Emma Louise Coffey and welcome to the Dairy Edge, the Chagas Dairy Podcast. We're bringing you the latest information, insights and opinion to improve dairy farm performance. On this week's episode, we're focusing on the recovery on dairy farms after Storm Emma. Joe Kelleher, dairy advisor in Newcastle West, gives us tips on how to manage the dairy cow and grassland during the difficult weather conditions. But first, Aidan Lawless from Johnstown Castle explains how they are coping after the heavy snow. Yeah, well, we had a, a fair bit of um, activity there last week. Sort of Thursday and Friday last week were, were rough days. Uh, we like it was probably three meter drifts of snow on places. The biggest problem for for a lot of us was just to, to try to get passage passage on the roads to to get um, staff in. And I should acknowledge uh, we were very lucky with the staff that we had here. Like that, the, that's the Trojan work trying to get here. And then they had a, an awful mess when they did get here. And I myself, I would say, actually snowed in as well for a couple of days. So. Um, it was the, the drift into the snow was a big problem and there was a good bit of storm damage then from trees down in places and then the frozen water pipes were the, the other big problem I suppose really with us um, in, 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 that, in terms of that. So there was a, we were lucky that there was no real structural damage done on the farm here but there would have been a good few farmers around in, in the Wexford area that would have lost sheds through the, the collapse and through the snow. That was probably the biggest problem for a lot of them but um, thankfully ours were stayed clear enough uh, from that point of view. So. And in terms of in how have conditions improved and how are you uh, doing currently at Johnstown Castle? Uh, they're, they, yeah, they've improved. Um, they're improving gradually. The, the cause uh, is sort of slow enough here, but maybe that's a good thing. We're, we've been lucky that we haven't had too much frost or freezing weather from road traffic ability, but um, the snow, we, we still, there's areas, there's some fields where still a foot or foot and a half of snow and, and covered and there's more than that there was very little snow. Again, going back to the drift and where it was, but so the gradual thought, things have improved greatly, like we're back to really out of the, the hardship now, but um, we, I think there was about 70, 75 mil of rain or snow, whichever that was measured in sort of over that, that three or four day period. So there's a lot of ground is, is, is wet enough and actually there's some of the fields then are surprisingly dry they're well not too bad and um, just where i think where a lot of snow didn't land and some of the drier fields so they're not too bad but um a lot of snow is gone we we had some sleazy snow again there last night so hopefully we've seen the, the back of that and um, but so the uh, conditions have improved a lot yeah yeah i mean all the roads are trafficable now and all so i think a lot of it now is maybe some fellas with water pipes uh, and all ourselves out the fields we haven't really been able to get out there yet but um Going on the meter, there's 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 leaks out in the field as well with probably burst pipes or something. So that'll be something we'll have to tackle when we can when, when we can travel the fields again. And in terms of if we focus on the dairy cow for a minute, Aidan, um, are you housed are you housed full time at the moment or are you out of grass? Uh, well, we're how we were housed full time up until today, and that was our first day where we we tried getting out the the spring calf cows. Um, I just I, again going back to you know the, the, there's a couple of fields that are sort of reasonably dry, and there's uh, there's no snow on them, so we 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 try getting them out there for a few hours now today. Um, so it's the first day, but all we had replacement peppers out there, and we had to bring them in during the snow, so they're still in, and all the the autumn calf, all the autumn calf milking cows are still still in as well um and i our problem there really is that we we got a good bit of grazing done in february but we, we because of the ground conditions then we have to graze a good bit of dry area then so we don't have too many dry fields left and and a couple of them are, are snow covered still so we're probably looking at next week before we get those 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 milking cows out but hopefully the spring ones if we can get them out at least by day maybe um i know they're giving heavy rain they're now forecast for friday again so we'll see what comes but we'll We'll pick and mix where we can, um, I suppose. But and and in terms of where you where you have the animals housed, Aidan, what sort of diet are they on? Well, the the autumn calf herd are on the same winter diet as it would have been on the whole time. So they're they they're getting the grass silage, the maize, and then they're getting the, the six kilos concentrate in the parlour and and two kilos and a blend. The spring cows, when we were housed full time, we were giving them five kilos of concentrate and and grass silage. Then sort of ad labour, you know, we're probably eating. I suppose uh, probably up to 10, 12 kilos of grass silage as well. Uh, that would have been good quality grass silage, good first cut of 70, 72, 74 DMD. So they seem to be settled enough on that. Now, when they, if we can get them back out, we'll, we'll drop back that to sort of the three kilos that we were feeding up until up until uh, the, the storm. So that was sort of the, the diet that they're on. So we're lucky enough that we have we have plenty of good quality feed still for the, for the milking cows that we do have to house. So. 
and and I suppose you acknowledge that the the silage is of of high quality, but have you seen a knock on effect of transitioning the spring calvers from the grazed grass back to a silage based diet? Uh, not too bad. Well, I mean, we we weren't we they had been getting a small bit of silage in the diet the whole time we were bringing them up until the week before the storm. There, they were sort of getting sil- some three or four kilo silage there from eight or nine o'clock at night, but. Um, just there's been a little bit of an unsettling effect overall in terms of um, just there during the storm. We we only milked once a day for um, well, during on Friday, I think, of the storm and then just sort of the stress of maybe weather and water and uh, different things. So the, the cows have taken a little bit of a knock, but um, their production wise, they seem to be back up to sort of more or less normal this week. And now milk solids, they're probably on the silage, I'd imagine our milk solids they, they are probably back a little bit on the on the spring herd, especially with just the grass silage. But they seem to be happy enough there to uh, they're actually anxious now to get out again today. Obviously they're they're to the to, to grass if conditions are are good, but they're they're we're, we're happy enough that we didn't like I said, the, we didn't really just a couple of cases of mastitis and but we didn't the cows other than that weren't too bad health wise, they seem to have recovered well enough and all. It's just that probably the milk solids are taking a bit of a hit with the change in diet, all right. I, I see that growth rate is, is is quite slow on a lot of farms um in February. Have you seen that in Johnstown Castle? Yeah, well, like I was saying to some of the farmers there, we just, we haven't had, a, even we didn't even get one week of, of growthy weather at any stage, really. Normally, during you know, even during the cold spell, you might get, but um, our growth rates right throughout February, really, we're sitting at the sort of, the single digits, sort of between sort of four to eight, sort of kilos of grass, really, for, for most of it. Uh, um, and maybe bar a couple of new receded pastures that might have done 10 or 12, but um, obviously, I'd say that we, I, we haven't been able to get out because we can't see the grass in a lot of it now this week. Like, but um, I'm sure it hasn't grown either in, in this week either in the first week of March. So growth rates have been very slow. But the one thing that we sort of were pleased with where the snow has cleared, they don't seem to have done much burning because uh, you know with easterly breeze would affect us here. But um, I think the snow probably a- sort of acted as a bit of a blanket. So really, our priority now for next week, if conditions improve well enough, like that, the ground conditions will be going with our second round of fertilizer to try. And hopefully it will be I mean, nearly two a week of mild weather that we will get a bit of burst and growth. So there's not a lot of grass out there, but uh, we want to try to keep grazing if we can, if conditions allow, just to, to keep it. And we will have we'll have silage in the diet, I'd say, imagine for the next few weeks, come, uh, some portion of it. Um, yeah, so we, we might not have enough grass, to, but we would like to be getting out and getting uh, grazed off anyway. So. And I suppose the the slow growth uh, in combination with the, uh, you know, not hitting the target in terms of the percentage grazed as a result of the weather would be a reason to look back over the spring rotation planner and readjust. Ah, uh, yeah, probably just uh, pushing out the, the the end of the first rotation a bit, like. But now we have a like we 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 were sort of on target there for the February, so we have a third of the like all the grazing ground grazed. So hopefully that, but there was wasn't a whole lot of growth coming back on that either. So. Our covers, I imagine, you know, our overall farm cover is probably back down to around the 600 mark, maybe now, I'd say, on the, on the, on the spring herd and something similar with the autumn ones. But we have a, we, we were lucky enough that we had sort of a week of very good sort of grazing. We were just starting to motor nicely there before the storm and we had got slurry out. That's another issue on a lot of farms here again, that sort of the slurry is building up. So we're, we're lucky enough that we have a sort of another week or 10 days before we have issues with that again or in any way. So, um, we we have we, just the the grass just to get that back on track. We will adjust the spring rotation plan a bit, like but we still have area that we can graze if the if the weather improve. And the thing about it here is if we get four or five reasonable days, the thing can change around quick enough. We saw that there before in the last couple of weeks. So hopefully, with a good forecast, maybe coming down the road, we might we might get back out and back to normal there next week or the week after. That's great. Thank you, Aidan. No problem, Emily. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Now let's get some advice. The next week will remain a challenge on farms. Joe Kelleher gives us an insight on how best to manage. The first point is we should be trying to see can we get the grass. Uh, so walk the driest paddock every day. See can the cows actually get some bit of grass in. If it's only three hours, leave them out at 10 o'clock in the morning and back in at one o'clock and see can we get that bit of grass into them. If that is not possible, which is the case on certain farms, then we'll have to replace that with um silage and silage is a poor replacement for the grass so we're going to have to supplement it with up to five or six kilos of ration um, and anything more than that then we're looking at uh, stomach upsets and possible acidosis so five or six kilos of ration 
probably if they're inside full time, you'll be looking at an 18% protein ration. If the cows can get out for that three hours and we're supplementing the 16% protein ration will be adequate. And if they're out full times, a 14% protein um, ration would be adequate. So the other thing then is if guys have anything which is probably not common, but if guys have anything like sugar beet or maize silage, now is the time to be feeding that um, and to give it to the cows that are starting to hit peak uh, milk production. And I guess we want to be conscious too, Joe, that you know where we're feeding a high level of concentrate, six kilos, for our heifers, they're probably eating between 10 and 12 kilos dry matter. So if we're feeding six kilos, that represents half of their diet. And that probably comes um, into mind when you're talking about um, stomach upsets and acidosis um, within dairy cows Absolutely. and early lactation. And, and in terms of it, where we're substituting grass with silage in the diet, like we're expecting a not knock on effect on production. You know, what what sort of effect would you expect to see in, in the milk? Yeah, I suppose the the energy value of silage is probably roughly around 75% that of grazed grass. And then if you couple that with it, the fact that the silage is much more fibrous in nature, you're going to have lower intakes. So the cow is going to eat a lot more or a lot less silage indoors than it would if it was eating grass outside. Um, so that's why we are supplementing with the the meal. So the meal is going to probably fill the gap some bit, but it won't... Um, bring us back up to where it would have been if the cow was outside of grass. So at best, the cow indoors full-time in silage, we're probably looking somewhere in the region of 20 litres, uh, depending on the silage quality. If the silage quality is, is up in the 70s, you maybe might get a bit more. If it's down in the low 60s, you may get a bit less than that. Uh, so there is probably three or four litres of a, of a drop compared to the cow outside full-time at grass. Um, and it's just something probably that has to be accepted for the next week or two that there is going to be a drop in production. And in terms then, if our, if our cows are housed full time, there are some health implications. So, you know, if we consider the other health and somatic cell, um, you know, the somatic cell may increase when cows are housed. What are your recommendations to try and manage somatic cell? Yeah, the I suppose the main thing is just has to be monitored as closely as possible. Uh, we have to keep a constant eye on it. So the best way to do that is to strip every cow before every milking. Uh, yes, it's adding a bit of time to the milking process, but hopefully it's a short-term thing for a week or two. But every cow should be stripped before every milking and just to check to see if there's any clots or any swellings in any of the quarters. The other thing I suppose the guys should be conscious of doing is uh, milk recording. Um, if at all possible, those that are milk recording, try book the first milk recording for the next week or 10 days. Uh, those that aren't milk recording should definitely consider doing it. It gives you a, an idea of which cows are causing the problems, but, uh, and then it will allow you to do a CMT test and narrow it down to which quarter is causing the problem. Uh, it also will help you understand what happened in the dry cow ter- uh, therapy that you just used. Uh, so the other thing is when cows are indoors, there's only two things that come in contact with the cow's teeth and they are the cubicles that the cow lies on and the cluster that's in the milk and powder. So with regards to cluster, if you see a spike in cell counts, I would be saying put out a few buckets and put a bit of paracetic acid into them and dip the clusters in between every cow. Uh, as regards the cubicles, we need to start lining the cubicles twice daily again um, and make sure they're, they're clean. Um, and also then the, the automatic scrapers just make sure they're running at least four times a day, um, depending on the size of the, the shed. Sometimes the longer sheds, you might even need to run them a bit more regularly than that. OK, based, um, just moving on to the grass scene then, um, Joe, based on the dairy farms in your area, how has grazing gone um, f- since the 1st of February? Are, cow- are our farmers getting out? And if they are, what sort of percentages are they grazing? Yeah, it's a, a bit of a mixed bag. I suppose the land quality around Newcastle West, as you head east to Newcastle West towards Limerick City, we have good fertile, free draining ground. Then as you head west into the higher ground on the Kerry border, you're on very heavy clay soils. And that is kind of, that is telling the story of what happened with the grazing since the 1st of February. So the guys on dry ground, some of them have been out since the 1st of February um, and have grazed the 40% at this stage, but they're few and far between. And then on the heavier sides, we have a lot of guys who haven't uh, seen grass at all yet this year. Uh, so really, we're looking at anywhere between zero and 40 percent of the grazing uh, platform grazed at this stage. And the other thing, I suppose, is those that are grazing is, is we're seeing that the regrowths are quite poor 
on the paddocks that have been grazed. So we're seeing growth rates of maybe three or four kilos when we would be expecting them to be up at 10 kilos. But after the snow and the weather we've had, the ground temperature is just that bit low to, to allow grass to kick off properly. OK, and, and where the the farmers are low in terms of area grazed, what are your recommendations to get going or get back on track between now and, say, the middle of April? Yeah, for the guys that are low or haven't even started yet, I suppose, just keep walking the paddocks, walk the dry paddock on the farm and see is there a possibility of getting cows out on that paddock for three hours. Um, and just keep keep checking it every few days. You may be surprised. You can make these decisions from the yard, walk into the dry fields and see what you can. If you can't get going, then the guys that haven't started, ideally, we need to start targeting the lowest covers on the farm. So start grazing off as much ground as possible to get the regrowth kicked in and to get that section of the farm moving so that when we start the second rotation that there's some sort of a decent cover um, of close to a 1,000 kilos in those paddocks at the start of the second rotation. So we would be probably, typically we're in for a third graze by the 1st of March and we know that's gone, so that's not uh, feasible for most. So really for those that haven't got going at all yet or have very little graze, we would be saying maybe a third now by maybe the 20th of March, maybe a third by the 5th of April and maybe finishing up then on the 15th or 20th of April at this stage. Um, so it, 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 it's quite a challenge for those guys to get through that amount of ground. Um, but we just have to keep monitoring the dry paddocks on the farm, see can we get uh, cows out. As regards the guys that maybe have been going fairly hard at it and on the drier ground and have been aggressive and that are hitting close to the 30%, uh, they're probably in the opposite in that maybe we need to be slowing down a small bit um, because they would have been gearing up for the 1st of April to finish the first round a lot of those, which is probably a bit soon considering the way the regrowths are, are after coming. So maybe that needs to be pushed out by 10 days. So we need to be looking at the 10th of April for those guys uh, which gives you somewhere in the region of maybe 60% of the farm to be grazed in the next 30 days, which works out at about 2% a day. So they just have to, to budget what's left to make sure that they don't um, run out of grass too fast. And I suppose it, we need to keep a close eye, especially when we're approaching the 1st of April, um, on the average farm cover and to make sure that we're not dropping down too far below 500 and especially 450 kilos that we wouldn't drop below the 450 kilo mark of an average farm cover. I think that's an excellent point Joe um, where growth is slow as you say you know the growth rate at the moment and for the last week or so has been half of that that you would expect at this time of year and it's very important to look backwards as well as looking forwards and it may mean that putting in a little bit of extra supplement towards the end of March and and you know extending the first rotation um, if we consider fertilizer, you know, tip, in a typical year, farmers generally spread their second round of fertilizer um, in and around this time. So the first to second week of March. What's your recommendation for spreading uh, considering the weather conditions we've had? Yeah, I suppose, again, it's, it's, it's a case of it's, it's in line with the soil type and in line with the grazing. There's, there's kind of a few different scenarios. There's the guys that got out in early January and late February on the dry soils they'll probably need to be going again. Um, and then there's the guys that just got out there the week before the snow. Um, and they're probably okay maybe for another week or two that they don't have to go again. And then there's the farmer who hasn't gone at all yet. And they need to spread the fertilizer as soon as they can and as soon as the ground is trafficable. I suppose the key thing for those guys though is don't wait for the whole farm to dry up. Don't be waiting for the day that you can spread the whole farm with fertilizer. If you can spread 20 or 40 acres um, today or tomorrow, you should spread those 20 or 40 acres and let that bit of the farm be moving away and uh, let the grass be kicking in, the growth be kicking into that. But don't be waiting for this day where you can travel the whole farm because there are going to be parts of paddocks you can't travel today. Um, there are going to be fields that you won't be able to go into. So just target the drier fields and, and start spreading the fertiliser in those as soon as you can. And in terms of the products, Joe, what would you recommend uh, for uh, in terms of fertiliser application? Yeah, I suppose... Dr. David Walbolo in Johnstone Castle made a comment there during the week at the meeting I was at where he said that once the growth rate exceeds 30 kilos per hectare, then the plant needs phosphorus. And he's saying somewhere in the region of 10 kilos of phosphorus um, at that stage. Now we're a long way off of 30 kilos, but if, if temperatures start to kick in, and I know the forecast for the weekend is for temperatures to rise, we could be hitting the 30 kilos by the end of the month. So the phosphorus needs to be at the, the plant root 
at that stage. So I would be saying if, if any guys or any farmers spreading this side of St. Paddy's Day, I would be recommending going with urea. But once we, we go past St. Patrick's Day, I would be saying maybe switching over to 18612, probably a bag and a half of 18612, depending on your, your nitrates records and that. And uh, But any index 1, 2 and 3 field for P and K should be getting 18612 uh, from Patrick's Day onwards. And then finally, Joe, I know this this is uh, taking a little bit away from the picture of what's happening right now, but you recently did some very interesting analysis on the types of fertiliser we spread in silage ground and their value in terms of cost and also the units of fertiliser. Um, when should we be getting out to spread our silage ground? The silage ground ideally should be spread about eight weeks before you intend to cut. That allows the fertiliser two weeks to kind of get moving and then six weeks to clear out of the system. So if you intend to have any hope of cutting silage on the 20th of May, you need to be getting your fertiliser out on the 20th of March. Um, If you're moving towards the 1st of June, you need to be getting it out by the 1st of April. So really, again, the last two weeks of March, if conditions allow, I would be saying we need to be getting as much as possible of the silage fertiliser out. And then just moving on from the timing, what sort of products do you recommend to spread on silage ground? We have moved as a nation, we're spreading half the amount of phosphorus and, and potassium as we used to be spreading in the early 90s. And it, at that time, there was a lot of 0730 being spread in particular on silage ground. And we've moved very much away from that towards the, the cutswar type products, the 24, two and a half tens. And even I'm noticing a trend in the last year or two where we're moving to even lower products again where we're going for maybe 23, 2.2 phosphorus and 4.5% um, potassium, which is lower again. So, and when you, I, as part of the article I did, I just looked at the cost of those. And yes, the ones, the the cheaper cuts for type products are coming in at 20 euros a ton cheaper. But when you cost them on a per unit basis, you're actually spending more on a per unit basis because you're spending 20 euros less a ton, but you're getting somewhere in the region of 140 units less of total fertilizer in that ton. So if we want to rectify the the fact that nearly 70% of our soils are deficient in P and K, we need to start reverting back to the 0730 type products. Um, Yes, it's going to cost a bit more on a per ton basis, but we will, on a per unit basis, it's not that much dearer. The other factor then, of course, the knock-on effect of all that is what will happen is the field will bulk up a good bit earlier and we'll have a field of silage that will be ready to cut on the 20th of May and we won't be waiting until the 10th of June for it to, to bulk up so we can cut it. And the knock-on again from that then is that we'll be cutting silage that will be in the 70s for DMD versus silage that's in the low 60s from DMD, which is a, a huge um, knock-on effect again. That's great. Thank you, Joe. Okay, no problem, Emma. That's it for this week's episode of the Dairy Edge podcast. And my thanks to Aidan Lawless and Joe Kelleher for joining me on this week's episode. Don't forget to subscribe on Apple Podcast. And for more information, go to Chagas website at chagas.ie. I'm Emma Louise Coffey, and join me next time for your Dairy Edge. <laughs>